Hello, I'm Chris from Gross Models, and uh, this is the continuing build of the C141B Starlifter for emodels.co.uk. Uh, the progress so far in the first part of this build uh, basically built most of the plane. Now it's too big to fit into the camera, but there you go. Uh, it's a 1 to 144 scale kit, in case you missed it. Uh, basically, this is what I've done so far. There are little porthole windows on the fuse rods there. Uh, the canopy on the front is a clear piece which I haven't attached yet, uh, which will need to be attached before painting. Uh, now, because I don't normally do planes, this is the first decent plane size that I've done, uh, I completely forgot about putting in a nose weight. Now, I know it's a thing when you're doing kits, I've known it was a thing, it is mentioned in the manual uh, to put a 10 gram nose weight in the in the front but they don't supply it and I don't know why they don't ever ever do this with kits but uh, they didn't now as I've already stuck it all together obviously breaking it open to put it in is going to be somewhat tricky but I am going to be attaching the canopy at a later date so I figured I could probably get away with putting a weight in there now what I've got is several actually um, this is a, a 12 gram uh, lead disc basically which I thought was going to be just about the right size if I cut it in half and put it in it's actually a little bit big but bearing in mind let's say how much room I'm going to have in there I think I can use the back wall and possibly some some of the base I'm going to be painting the inside of this black anyway so I'm going to try sort of cutting and moulding and it's lead so it's got it's quite easy to manipulate <coughs> uh, so I'm going to try shaping this to fit in there and hopefully get away with it if it is a little bit light it's a little bit light but you know we'll see what I can get away with uh, so I'm going to play around with that see if I can get that shape to fit in there and then I've got uh, a few other pieces let's say ready cut off the sprue and ready sitting in my little drawer of waiting uh, some of the undercarriage mainly uh, with the covers over the undercarriage there and some of the bits from that uh, to do the painting I have decided that I'm gonna paint the excuse me, turn it over uh, the interior of, of these in the the silver so I need to do basically all of the inside bit there and the insides of the doors that I haven't put on there yet so I'm gonna be painting those next and then I'll be masking off this whole area basically and then I can do the the exterior now the bottom part is in the basic grey and then the top has the camo on it which obviously I've got the paints ready to do uh, so first up I'm going to play around with the, the nose cone see if I can get that on there in there somehow and then obviously attach that back in place once that's black inside then I can mask off the windows and do the paint on the entire surface. Uh, obviously got a mask off the little windows on there as well, but it's because they attach from the inside, you've got no choice but to do them before you assemble it. So, that's what's happening now. Uh, obviously I'll show and update what I can, but I'm not gonna show you me trying to cut this into bits because that's gonna be quite boring. But once that's in and black, then I'll show you putting the canopy on, which hopefully will be the next part. But if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I'm sure you'll be aware that my plans never actually work. So what you see next might well be something completely different, but hopefully we'll see you soon with that bit. So, And there's the lid shaped to fit inside the cockpit. Now the cockpit, instead of painting the inside black, I painted the inside of the cockpit black. So the, so the windows are still sort of shiny, but you can't see anything inside it because this was actually bigger than I thought it was going to end up. So it actually pretty much fills the entire cockpit there. So I figured the best way of disguising it is just to cover it up completely. So the windows are going to be completely black, but still shiny. So I think that will look okay once it's done. Obviously the, the bits that aren't windows are going to be painted over anyway to match the, the camo there. So I'm going to use some normal super glue to glue that in place and then glue that over the top as well. Uh, next up I have been 
doing the last bit of priming on the little covers of the uh, hatches that will we'll covers so I need to paint the insides of those that aren't really going to be seen in the chrome as well so it matches the other pieces uh, and I've got the little bits to put onto here so I'm going to do that now these are the um, outside wheel covers so I need one bit to go one end and the other bit to go the other end so again just using extra thin on these and just covering the end where it's only a small amount of paint that we're covering with these I'm not worrying about removing it to glue over because the glue will eat through that small amount so I'm getting these glued on So parallel to the ends and parallel to the top side as it says in the instructions and that one in and the other one the other side making sure they're both horizontal with each other and with the the deck there so I leave that aside to dry and then that's another bit done uh, so I'll get this glued up and all together on there and then it will be time to start the main painting which is going to be fun so I'll get that ready uh, going to be priming it in the grey and then starting with the underside basically the, the base grey colour and then putting the camo over the top. So I'll get this glued in. I say super glue, no, nothing special there. And normal uh, canopy glue for the canopy. And I'll see you in a moment. Or actually, even sooner than that, because I realised that I haven't actually shown any masking. So I'm using some thin Tamiya masking tape. Uh, basically, I get a piece off, stick it down, and then using a, a sharp knife cut the shape on each now for these obviously I don't know exactly what shape they need to be I can sort of eyeball it and try and get it about right what I'm doing is cutting smaller than I need to be so I can sort of layer it up so if I get rid of the the bit down the side there uh, the front window has got a, a slight shaping to it so I'm just going to try a shape like that which is too big at the moment although the height is about right so I can get an idea where it's going to be what I'm actually going to do is basically cut that one in half so hopefully I can get this on camera um, I can get one half actually it's a little bit too tall let's get rid of this very top of that. It's about that much too tall. So I'm going to get that positioned on one side of the window. Get that lined up in there and then get the other side positioned on the other side of the window obviously it doesn't matter about the overlap in the middle because masking's masking and apart from that we're sorted just maneuver that around a little bit more and that is pretty much that i uh, do that for all of the other windows obviously little circles for the, the side windows there uh, for the undercarriage masking I'm going to use a slightly thicker tape and basically just sort of feed it in and wrap it round a bit pretty much like that but obviously a little bit more accurately uh, so I'll get that done and then get it primed in the grey 
and then be ready to start with the actual colours. So I'll uh, see you in a moment. After priming it, it became apparent that there were still some sort of fairly major seam lines and problems in it. So I've used a combination of uh, some Tamiya cement on the ones that weren't too bad, which is why these bits are shiny, uh, and some Sprugu on here, which is uh, basically Tamiya Extra Thin with some sprue melted into it to create a material that's basically plastic, uh, which I'll show you quickly, is just a white, because I use white sprue, <coughs> which gives a nice a sort of liquid that when the glue evaporates just dries into a a white solid just touching up a couple of extra bits which is sandable paintable and uh, will be basically indistinguishable from the the plastic itself there's one little bit that i haven't done which i'm just gonna do on camera if i can get the camera position right just on this edge of this engine so basically just putting in a blob of it letting it dry and fill into the, the seam there now it will be proud of the plastic so it will need sanding down once it's dry I'll start doing the rest of it in a moment uh, starting off with a rough sandpaper and gradually working down to a fine sort of polish and then obviously repriming over the top again but worth doing to get rid of the seam line to make it a one uniform piece so uh, actually a little bit there still a little bit rough so I'm going to add a little bit more on there as well then when that's dry basically tomorrow I can sand it down and then go over it again and then I'll be ready for starting the actual coloured painting but I thought I'd just give you a quick update on that step just so you know what's going on and basically what you can do if you've got some gaps if it was a, a bigger gap then obviously I might need to fill it with um, a more normal filler but Sprugu does it just fine on just the small touch up areas so I'll uh, leave you that I'll get that sanded down and reprimed and then we'll start on the actual paint next time I see you well that's the first pass back through primer after filling it in and it's much better it's not quite there yet you can't really tell until you get the primer back on because the white against the grey does give a different effect uh, but the wing join is pretty much okay I will sand that down a little bit further uh, the cockpit bit I do need to sand down the edges a little bit more and blend those in but all in all it's getting there so uh, yeah I think one more pass and then that will be ready so nearly right after sanding it down and repriming it I'm happy with how that's come out it's all blended in quite nicely I've still got the masking on the cockpit windows because obviously I still need to do the painting in the colour but that's the priming all done so I'm going to be using for the main base uh, Vallejo Dark Ghost Grey now they don't do a the uh, official colour that's required according to the sheet is uh, Grey Azure which they don't do in the Model Air colour so this is a, a very close match it's sort of a bluey grey which is the main colour and then I'll be using olive green and uh, dark green for the, the two shades of green on the camo but first of all all of it is covering in the ghost grey and uh, then we'll start masking for the uh, camo so I'll paint it and then show you the masking okay that's all the grey base coat put on um, obviously all over the top all over the base as well so that's all done with that now for the camo itself uh, it's slightly challenging because the instructions are not quite right. Uh, now we've got on here the, the colours called out for the patterns and everything else, but they don't quite match up. Um, now if you see, for instance, the bit at the back here uh, where you've got the light green 
that comes over from the two sides obviously on the left side you can see it comes down there on the right side it comes down there which is fine but the front is wrong uh, we've got the, the dark green and then a patch of light green, which on the left side you can see the dark green with the patch of light green. But on the right hand side there is no light green at all. It should obviously come down, as you can see it coming down on the side there, so it must come down at least some of the way. But it's not there. So I'm not going to be able to do an exact duplicate of this because the physics won't let me. So what I am going to do is use this as a guide and just basically do my own thing with it. So it'll be along these lines but not exactly the same um, so what I'm going to do as I say this is the grey that is the, no the normal the standard grey for the undercoat uh, what I'm going to be doing is masking off the grey and leaving the green bits uh, my plan is to uh, say mask off all of the grey that's here and leave both of the greens uh, then I'll paint all of that in the light green and then over the top of that, I will mask uh, the light green off again and just paint the dark green over the top. Now, the reason I'm doing that this way rather than say masking and then removing then masking again is because some of the greens do match up, let's say, against each other. So rather than having to mask one side and then mask the other side exactly and match it up, I think it's easier just to mask the, for instance, the, the bottom of the gray and then I can mask just once more across there and not have to mask exactly opposite sides to match it all up. So I'm going to get that done. I'm going to be using a combination of masking, uh, Tamiya masking tape uh, and blue tack. Um, my plan is to use the blue tack uh, basically for the edges. So I'm going to mask off the, the major areas, basically all the underside and the big, big areas. But the edges I'm going to be using, for instance, sort of like that. Uh, on the edges of the colour, for instance, I'll start on this bit on the, on the right, right wing here where you can see. So basically I'm going to be going for this sort of shape. So I'll basically say try and match-ish what I've got down there. Probably going to need a little bit more than that, but just to give you the idea, I'm going to do it all off camera because there's no need to show everything again so basically I'm getting the sort of shape so this will stay grey and this will be in the dark green when I come to do the dark green but I'll be doing light green over it anyway um, the reason for using the blue tack is it gives a nice sort of feathered effect uh, where it, so it'll be very light underneath as the paint goes in getting darker as it gets towards the, the end so you don't get a, a definite solid line you just get a that's almost the feathering in of the masking, which is quite a nice effect. So I'm going to not do that on yet. I'll be putting the the masking tape down first where I can, and then blue tack so to the edges, going to roughly this pattern. Um, I say pretty much all of the underside and the underside of the wings aren't going to be coloured, so I'll just be putting masking over all of that. Uh, the engines themselves again aren't painted, so pretty much all of this from below there and the bottom part of the, the fuselage itself is not coloured. A little bit bits in places but most of it is I say plain. So I'm gonna get that all masked off and then as I say do the, the light green and show you that when I've got it masked up. So see you in a moment. Pre painted but masked. Uh I say it looks like a blue tack snail has gone crazy over it but that's pretty much what I'm gonna be aiming for. Uh, now obviously the bits that are all covered are going to stay grey. Uh, the other bits I'm going to spray in light green now and then go over with the darker green once I remask a bit more. So uh, yeah, I think we'll show you that up front before and then you can see what it looks like in after stage two. So, And that's the light green which actually came out quite dark but the other green is a different green the the dark green is more of a sort of gray green by the looks of it so uh what i'm going to do now <coughs> is leave most of this masking in place or pretty much all of this masking in place but add some more to it so what i'm going to do uh for instance this front piece uh, i need a line about here uh where this bit is going to stay in the light green and the front piece is going to be the darker so what i'm going to do is remove 
it's blue tech hopefully which with any luck you'll be able to see gives say a nice edge that's sort of feathered but not a sort of soft edge so I'm going to remove some of this and some of that up to about there I should think oh, a bit further apparently go to there on that side and go back a bit further on that side to about there so let's peel that off to there keep hold of that because I'll be using that in a moment uh, I'm going to put some more masking over there so basically enough to wrap around and cover what I've already done More, a little bit further up. So the bits that I'm covering now are going to stay in this green. There we go. Make sure I get all of it. Don't want to have any extra greens appearing down there. That's that, and that's got to go. A little bit further around that side. Sorry. So that's that. And then I shall reapply the blue tack snails around the edge here again, just to add that extra piece of let's say non straight line. Uh, make sure I cover the edges there. Do that in a few other places as well to give me the, the second. Uh, color scheme so what I'm doing here is basically I've done this bit and that bit so now I'm going to cover over this piece here and just paint the darkest patch on the front on all of this so these greens will be now covered so I'll get that done and then uh, get it painted in the darker gray darker green so I'll see you in a moment well that's it painted uh, it's not dry dry but it's dry enough that I can get some of this masking off and we'll see how it looks uh, now I've chosen this bit to start with, the rest of it's all still covered uh, purely because I know it's got the three colours, hopefully, underneath. So if we peel off this, with any luck on camera that should show up as being different greens underneath here and grey underneath there. Now this blue tack is not wasted because although it's covered in paint if you sort of squish it and spread it and pull it around a bit it's obviously only a very thin layer of paint over a blob so it's actually perfectly usable again so I'll get rid of that uh, now let me peel off some more let's say the paint is uh, dry it's been about half an hour since I painted it which is quite a long time for some of this uh, Vallejo air to be set but not solid if you know what I mean so I'm hoping that I can just give you an idea what it's going to look like because obviously I'm not going to film peeling off all of the masking paper can't get a grip on near this there we go that's got an edge now the nice thing about using the paint out the bottle if I do have any problems with it say peeling up and causing problems it is all just stock colors there's no custom mixes or anything like that in there so if I do need to touch it up it's just a simple matter of grabbing it out the bottle and trying again so let me just try hopefully and get rid of this bit remembering that there's little protuberances on some of these wings get that all off the bottom of the wing as well okay and there we have it 
it's still on there obviously but come on obviously I don't want to scratch the paint underneath by trying to grip it but it's all got to come off there you go worry about that bit underneath later uh, right so there you have it that's how the camo is going to come out and it's quite nice I'm quite happy with the way that's come out I deliberately didn't do a big thick solid layer especially on this lighter green it's got some patching and shading to it uh, and obviously the bit underneath is all just the plain grey so yeah I'm happy with that I'm gonna as I say, spend a little time getting rid of all the masking and then I'll be able to show you that together. Uh, then we'll be putting the bits back on, putting the undercarriage on, uh, and then some light weathering. So it's approaching the end. See you soon. That's all the masking tape off, um, quite a bit. And uh, reclaimed most of my blue tack. And the kit itself. All right, uh, I always knew there was gonna be some touching up to do, but all in all, it's fine. Uh, there are mainly on the, the top body piece some bits where obviously the tape layers oops, excuse me where the tape layers obviously didn't quite overlap or didn't stick down where they overlapped so I've got a bit of touching up on the grey to do on there which isn't a problem uh, everything else is actually mostly as I intended one for some reason uh, little problem with the grey has come up with the masking tape but just in one spot for some reason don't know, might have been a spot or something on there when it was painted, but the primer's still there, so I'll just go again, brush over that with the grey. Uh, so, a little bit of touch up. Uh, for the first time, I've taken the masking off of the windows, and that's come out quite well with the black painting on the inside there. So I'm happy with that. was a little bit concerned about that, how that was going to come out, but that's done as intended. Uh, and the uh, windows on the side of the fuselage, taking the masking off of those as well. So, uh, yes, a little bit of touch-up to do, and then let that dry properly. Uh, then I can put the fronts on the engines. Still got masking tape all over my fingers there as well. Little bit's going to be everywhere for weeks. Uh, so, yes, uh, as I say, touch up a few problem areas, but not as many as I feared. More than I'd like, but there we go, you can't have everything. Uh, last bits to put on the engines and the undercarriage. And then... Uh, not weathering as i said uh decals i've got the decals to do so i might do those before i put the undercarriage on because again it's just something else to get potentially knocked and cause problems with um i might find a new camera angle as well because it's obviously gonna have to be a bit further away now so yeah i'll uh say pull out the brush and use the paints that i've been using the thing for the airbrush just straight through and brush paint those on cover them over then uh We'll be ready for the next bit. Right, all the, the touch up of the paint has been completed and I've done some detail painting on it as well. There's uh, things like the little black line around the tail and the nose cone, uh, which wasn't actually mentioned in the instructions or the paint thing, but uh, obviously it's pictured on the, the box art. So I've done that in, in black with the gray marking on there. Uh, then I've given it a, a quick gloss coat uh, with, with uh, some pledge just to give it a slightly shiny finish which won't be the finished model obviously I'll be doing more of a matte coat on it but need that for the decals uh, now the decals as I'm sure everybody's aware how to do decals but I'll run through it quickly um, basically using the instructions and everything you find out where they've got to go I'm going to put the first one on the 15 is the first one for some reason um, which goes across the front here so I found it on the paper here I'm using a knife just to cut it out and then picking it up with some tweezers uh, off camera just dunking it into water just some warm tap water it uh, sort of loosens it off uh, moving the instructions the other decals out of the way uh, dry off a little bit on some tissue so I've got the decal ready to go there I'm just going to put on my visor so I can see exactly. Yeah, there is a, an up and a down on it. 
so it needs there's some writing it's basically a set of numbers uh, which goes according to the instructions here uh, across where we're we going yeah just in front of where that uh, the lump appears so it's going to go about there uh, so that should be able to be moved yep that's moving on the paper now so I'm just going to hold the paper and then use the edge of the tweezers just to push that into place now a very small decal like this you don't need to worry too much about anything but I am going to use some micro set just to make sure it, it beds down properly and that just helps it affix in place it will also help if it was going across any bumps or curves it helps it bed down and flatten out to the surface uh, now when the decals are done and dry I'll be using the, the microsol to uh, again get rid of the, the transparent pieces of the decal because at the moment obviously you can still see the outline of it it's not just the numbers but the micro set will uh, sorry the microsol will help that to finally get rid of all of the backing of the, the decal uh, so I'm going to go and do the rest of the decals there's obviously quite a few on here uh, lots of the lines I am going to use the decals for instead of trying to mask and paint because they're just awkward shapes uh, basically I've got so a few bits to do on the on the top here the, basically the wings that's a bit and the the back wings are the, are the lines uh, and then on the coloured page here which hopefully not going to get too many reflections from because it's still in the plastic uh, we've got all the labelling flags and ident identification numbers uh, surrounds for the doors and uh, the USAF uh, stars which look like they go on just on the, the left wing uh, on the top and the bottom strangely enough so there's nothing on the right wing I don't know I only do what I'm told uh, so I'm going to get that done I'm not going to film all of that because this video is getting long enough as it is uh, once they're all on I'll uh, give it another little uh, gloss coat just to make sure they're all sitting properly and then on to some light weathering so see you soon for that okay point of note about the lines uh, they're not the right size I've sorted out the um, ones mentioned in the instructions and put them in the shape on the table here uh, which is just out of shot let's move that around a little bit there you go uh, so they basically are pictured like that Actually, that one there that one's on the edge that one down that edge uh, but uh, for instance this one goes along here uh, it should be all the way on there not hanging over the edge uh, that one again goes on there and again should end about there uh, the two sides are probably about twice as uh, uh, maybe just about right possibly so I've decided what I'm going to do is put them on basically as they are overhanging the ends and then I can trim them down after they've been applied that way I can make sure they do line up that may be what they intended um, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and think that's how they intended it to be done I'm just going to take a look at the the bigger ones for instance number 38 should be along this front wing 38 is one of those and that's no, oh, that one's just about the right length, actually. 36. Oh, they go across there. So that one is uh, probably a little bit long. 36, 37 is that one. So that's, that's probably about right. And that's, yeah, definitely too long because it's only got to go to the middle here. So yeah, some of them do seem to be 
off size and some of them do seem to be about right but I figure the best way is to do it as I just said I'll start in the middle uh, with uh, where have we got this back one I think I'll start with 28 which is this long one so I'll put that where it needs to be there uh, which is just the side of all these marks here so that one goes about there then I'll work away from that down the two sides then up and across and then trim them down so I'll uh, let you know if there's any other things to make a note of but other than that hopefully see you when all the decals are on almost finished the decals of the lines I haven't put any of the other detail pieces on yet but I thought I'd just again show the problem with the lining up uh, the long line along here uh, should end there it should come from here oh, just <coughs> excuse me uh, where, the, where the bend is is a, a different piece so it should end here and then we've got another straight to go across there which is about the right length uh, actually no sorry that's too long because that comes from the inside of this so it goes from there to there so that's too long uh, this is obviously much too long so once the decals are set on there and dry I need to cut say here and take off the, this entire patch on both sides and then the new one just goes straight across the bottom from there uh, on the tips of the wings it wasn't too bad actually there's again just a bit too long on this one and a little bit too long on that one but uh, not bad at all now the ones on the back tail plane I have uh, cut down to size so they actually fit on nicely um, I'm assuming that they make them deliberately too long in case they get broken or cut or whatever so uh, yeah uh, still stuff to do but thought I'd give you a quick update halfway through and uh, see when it's all done right all the decals are on um, it's got lots of uh, bits around doors and mainly the black lines are the important bit uh, tail fin's got uh, a few bits on it now the decals on this are a bit strange they don't seem to work the same way as many decals that I've dealt with previously um, although I've been using the microsol on it you can still see the non-painted part so I'm hoping that um, a matte, matte varnish on that will dull that down and blend it in a little bit before I do some weathering uh, but before I do that I'm going to finish assembling the kit now on the underside we've got the, the wheels to go on and the, the covers so I'm going to get that on now uh, using Tamiya Extra Thin uh, basically I've got the two wheels the main wheels to go in about there and then we've got the cover to go over oh, like that uh, that is the right one basically goes on there like that and the other side goes over there uh, then on the top side we've got the little bits to go over the little hole through here that you can see and obviously the front wheel and the front cover as well uh, I'm not going to film all of that obviously because it's not much to really show but I'm going to put the first wheel on just to give you the idea the main fixing points are the whole of that back piece and that little pin there obviously the back piece touches the back and the pin goes into that area there so just hold that for a few seconds make that sit down on there then I'll leave it obviously up the wrong way to make sure it's set before I put any weight on it making sure they're about level I need to go backwards a little bit on that these aren't a perfect fit either I'm not sure exactly what's what with these but we do the best we can uh, so I'll get those on then get the covers on as well uh, then get it matte varnished and be ready to start the weathering so I'll see you with that in a moment and that's all the decals on uh, covered in microsol and then given a matte varnish uh, overall quite happy the the details for the the doors and the window portholes do actually make it pop out a bit 
uh, as to the details on the the rear you know tail tail fin uh, the edges haven't come up like they normally do with microset uh, microsol rather that sort of dissolves the the carrier so they don't look as good as i would hope but anyway uh, what i'm going to do now oh, also i've put on the undercarriage glued that all in place so the model is actually built and completed now uh, i'm going to give it all a light uh, airbrush over with some very thin smoke wash a tamiya smoke in thinner basically uh, just to give everything a, a blend in and dirty it all down just a little bit uh, i'm not going to be weathering this one heavily <coughs> except for in the undercarriage bays i'm going to be going a bit darker in those but uh, first of all i'm going to start on the underside of this uh, with the, the smoke see how it comes out and then i say light, lightly on the top as well uh, again airbrushing i can't really show you so i'm going to get that done off camera and then come back and show you what's what but the let's say the decals all on there's there's even little ones that don't stand here and no no steps on the sides of the the engines it's quite a lot of small detail for let's say a big kit all that's a 144 kit but i'll get the the uh, wash done and then worry about some finer detail weathering almost there i've given it a, a light wash over with tamiya smoke and put in some detail weathering uh, just in a bit of the engines which i'm going to go a little bit heavier on uh, and what else have i done i've done a little bit of uh, sort of dirt and grime in some of the panel lines so you can see some of them coming out a little bit darker uh, and also uh, a bit more in the the undercarriage base just to show that they're going to be the the dirty bits um, other than that it's almost completed uh, i don't want to go heavy weathering on it because it's I say, an in-use plane rather than a an old wreck or a, a really old abandoned plane so i'm going to do a little bit more i say growing up the engines and then i'll be showing you the completed model so see you in a moment and there we have the kit completed all in all quite good fun i haven't built many uh sort of full-size planes before i've only done a couple of small ones so i'm quite happy with the way it's come out uh, the main problem with the kit is the decals they don't seem to be uh stick it on they stick fine but the the carrier film on it doesn't seem to want to disappear and it's left some little white spotches which if I was going to weather it heavier, then obviously they'd be covered. But being a plane that's sort of designed to be still in service and you know still in use, obviously I don't want it filthy dirty. But uh, all in all, it's quite a good fun build. Uh, it took me a bit longer than many because I just wanted to get it right. But yeah, I think anyone will quite enjoy building this. Uh, say a few minor problems here and there, but all in all, it's fine. I'll change the camera in and put some say more detail shots in. But all in all. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy building. <laughs>